The idea we still allow semi-automatic weapons to be purchased is sick. It's just sick. It has no, no social redeeming value. Zero, none. I'm going to try. What will you try and do? I'm going to try to get rid of assault weapons. During the lame duck? I'm going to do it whenever I, I got to make that assessment as I get in and start counting the votes. Uh, Mr. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. You might not own a gun, and that's okay, but there are plenty of reasons why you should be pro-gun anyway. In this video, I'm going to give you five of the reasons why you should be on the side of the Second Amendment. pro-gun. Now before you go getting all up in arms, pun intended, let me explain why. Even if you don't own a gun yourself, there are plenty of reasons why you should be fighting for the right to bear arms. So sit back and relax while I give you five of the best reasons to fight for your Second Amendment rights. Reason number one, Gun laws don't work. I was originally going to talk about a few cities, but I don't want to bore you, so I'm just going to talk about the notorious Chicago, who is known for their strict gun laws and high murder rate. In order to own and possess a firearm in the city, you must first obtain a firearm owner's identification card from the Illinois State Police. State law requires Illinois citizens to pay $10 and take a photo to own or possess a gun. A Second Circuit court ruling says the FOID card goes too far and makes criminals out of law-abiding citizens who keep guns within their own home. All firearms must be registered with the police department and gun owners are required to undergo a background check and training course. Gun owners are also required to comply with Chicago's gun storage laws, which require all firearms to be stored in a locked case when not in use. So hopefully, if you are being attacked or threatened, the other party will let you retrieve your gun from its locked case. In 2014, the state of Illinois issued a concealed carry law for the whole state. However, as far as the city of Chicago, this basically only allows you to carry a concealed weapon in your vehicle. It's easier to tell you where you can carry the weapons than where you can't carry. You are not allowed to carry in any public buildings or any public places, including all parks. But I did find two exceptions. Licensees are not prohibited from carrying a concealed firearm while on a trail or bikeway if only a portion of the trail or bikeway includes a public park. The original law also prohibited the possession of a firearm on any public way within 1,000 feet of a public park. However, in 2018, the Illinois Supreme Court determined that the firearm prohibition within 1,000 feet of parks violated the Second Amendment, noting that this requirement would effectively prohibit the possession of a firearm for self-defense within a vast majority of the acreage in the city of Chicago because there are more than 600 parks in the city. So you can't carry in any of the parks or where people are gathering in public or if you are drinking or on drugs or if you are involved in a drug deal or if you're involved in gang related activities etc. It actually states all of this in the law. <laughs> But you can carry on the outskirts of the park. Since 2019, all assault weapons and high capacity magazines have been banned in the city of Chicago. Now let's look at the crime rates. The Illinois State Police law enforcement has clearly stated that uh, having fingerprints, having universal background checks, having a FOID card system is what helps reduce gun violence in our state. In reports the following. 2021 ended with 797 homicides and 3,561 shooting incidents. So 2020 ended with 769 homicides and 4,033 shooting incidents. However, the Cook County Medical Examiner actually reports a slightly higher number. For our purposes, we compared violent crime data for June, July, and August over the last five years. This year's violent crime numbers are on par with the numbers in 2019. That's after an uptick in 2020 and 2021. This Labor Day weekend in particular, the number of shootings were down, but the shootings this year were more deadly. We had 205 homicides recorded, 
for the months of June, July and August this year, and that's compared to 277 during the same period last year. And the reason that gun laws don't work brings us to reason number two of why you should support the Second Amendment, and that is criminals don't care about gun laws. The precursors to the violence are illegal possession of guns. There's an old saying that goes, if you outlaw guns, only outlaws will have guns. And it's true. If gun laws stopped criminals, then we wouldn't need police. We could just arm everyone and let them sort it out themselves. But of course, that is not how it works. Criminals just don't care about the law. If they did, then they wouldn't be criminals. So why would they suddenly start obeying gun laws? It's simple, they wouldn't. In fact, stricter gun laws can even make it easier for criminals to get weapons. When law-abiding citizens are forced to give up their guns, there's a whole black market that opens up to meet the demand. So while politicians might think they're doing something to make us all safer, they are only hurting the innocent law-abiding citizens who actually follow the laws. Which brings me to point number three. People need to be able to protect themselves. It's a simple fact of life. When someone breaks into your home, you're generally not going to be able to reach for the phone and dial 911 in time. As the saying goes, when seconds count, the police are only minutes away. In a world where danger can strike at any time, citizens need to be able to defend themselves and their families. After all, Vulnerable people are typically the targets for criminals. Chicago police are warning about a rash of robberies targeting women in the Ukrainian village neighborhood. Three of them happened Friday night within a 30 minute period. Police say in each case, a group of men approached a woman and used physical force to steal her things. The men are described as being younger, between 18 and 21 years old. They were wearing dark clothes and ski masks. And crime is on the rise throughout the U.S. For many cities, across the nation last year will be remembered as a violent one. In 2021, Chicago saw more murder than any time in the past quarter century. 16 cities across America stretching from Portland, Oregon to Jackson, Mississippi to Philadelphia, all experiencing a record-breaking number of homicides. Some critics blame defunding the police as a reason for the spike in murder and other violent crimes. With calls to defund the police, which I think is the dumbest thing ever, getting louder every day, it only increases is the vulnerability of the vulnerable. We need to be able to protect ourselves and our families, and the only way to do that is with a gun. So I will definitely be taking these, and what is the color of this pistol again? Snapper beige. I'll take it. I am a whopping five foot two and 100 pounds. Do you think I can defend myself without a gun? No. I'm a lover, not a fighter, but I will shoot anyone who threatens me and mine. Guns don't just protect us from criminals, but they also serve as a check on government authority by providing a deterrent against tyranny. Which is number four of why we need to fight for the right to bear arms. Protection from government overrun. Adolf Hitler famously said to conquer a nation, first disarm its citizens. Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party rose to power in Germany in in part by promising to protect its citizens from the threat of gun violence. And once in power, Hitler wasted no time in making good on his promise. The image of Adolf Hitler, the Führer, leader of the Nazi party, casts a long shadow over the second half of the 20th century. A vision of incomprehensible evil that endures today. But behind this figure, was an ordinary man, a master manipulator whose talent for public speaking and deep understanding of how to effectively use propaganda propelled him to ultimate power. The term propaganda always has these two lives. On the one hand, it is seen as a decidedly negative term that involves manipulation, brainwashing, fake news, and so on. On the other hand, it's a neutral term. It's about shaping, strategizing, communicating a political message with a view to persuading people, a particular kind of audience, to act in a particular way, and then looking at how they are responding to this in order to take the feedback and recalibrate that system of communication. 
After rising to power in the early 1930s, one of the first things they did was pass a series of laws restricting gun ownership. Among other things, these laws required gun owners to register their weapons with the government. And also, they prohibited Jews from owning firearms. Then, they began confiscating guns from people they considered to be potential enemies of the state, including Jews, political dissidents, and others. Shortly thereafter, they began rounding up and murdering Jews in mass. It is estimated that the Nazis killed six million Jews during the Holocaust. While it is impossible to know for sure, it is likely that many of those lives could have been saved if the Jews had been able to defend themselves with firearms. German citizens were disarmed by their government in the late 1930s, and by the mid-1940s, Hitler's regime had mercilessly slaughtered six million Jews and numerous others whom they considered inferior. Through a combination of removing guns and disseminating deceitful propaganda, the Nazis were able to carry out their evil intentions with relatively little resistance. So what is the, what is the point you're trying to make? If, if there had been guns in Germany, my, there might not have been a Holocaust? My, my point is, they were, that was only one of the countries that I mentioned. There were a number of countries where tyranny reigned and before it happened, they disarmed the people. That was the point. Noah Webster said, when he was talking about tyranny, that the people of America would never suffer tyranny because they are armed. So, but just clarify, if, if there had been no gun control uh, laws in Europe at that time, would six million Jews have been slaughtered? I think the likelihood of, of Hitler being able to accomplish his goals would have been greatly diminished if the people had been armed. Because they had a powerful military machine, as you know, the Nazis. I, under I understand that. They could have simply gone in, and they did go in and wipe out whole communities. But realize there was a reason that they took the guns first. But as history has shown, Adolf Hitler's attempt to ban guns did not make Nazi Germany any safer. It only made it easier for him to tyrannize his own people. You think it can't happen here in America? There's a lot that has happened over the past 10 years, over the past three years that I thought would never happen. The government, did a whole shutdown and wouldn't let us work, wouldn't let us eat out, wouldn't even let us get our hair cut, but they still did. In security footage obtained by Fox News and timestamped Monday, 3.08 p.m. Pacific time, an 80-year-old part-time Napa resident called Nancy Pelosi can be seen slinking through a San Francisco hair salon. She has wet hair. She is not wearing a mask, but she was indoors. She was almost alone because due to coronavirus regulations, salons in San Francisco are closed for indoor services. Nancy Pelosi went inside. She can do that because she is the Speaker of the House, third in line for the President's. You cannot because you don't have as much power as Nancy Pelosi has. The owner of the salon, a woman called Erica Kios, was furious about this. She saw the unfairness of it. She told Fox News that Pelosi's trip was, quote, disturbing and a slap in the face to people who were not allowed to work because of Nancy Pelosi. And it's funny, all the lawmakers that are calling for gun control and bans, guess what? They all have security that carries guns. Pretty ironic, don't you think? Reason number five, guns don't kill people, people kill people. It's a simple statement, but it's true. After all, a gun is just an inanimate object. It can't load itself or pull its own trigger. That's up to the person who is using it. Ah, tell me Jefferson. Do these amendments do adequate honor to your Constitution? Well, the one about free speech is excellent. But the one after that... What's wrong with it? I just think it's a little... long. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, as long as people aren't being dumb asses about it. Sounds good to me. You don't need the dumbass part. Without it, how will future generations know that the right to own a gun doesn't give you the liberty to act like a dumbass with it? How will people know that they shouldn't leave loaded guns lying around the house unlocked willy-nilly? Or that you shouldn't be all cavalier when you handle one? Or that they shouldn't give a five-year-old a loaded gun to play with unsupervised? Girl. How will they know these things? It's common sense. I mean, like, duh, nobody's gonna be that dumb. Now, enough of this boring amendment talk. 
Let's play pinata. So when someone commits a senseless act of violence, the blame lies squarely on the individual and not with the weapon. So the next time you see this, I'm gonna try to get rid of assault weapon. Please remember this. Why is it every time there is a shooting, they want to ban assault rifles? Even if the shooting isn't even with an assault rifle. It's because this starts a precedence for confiscating guns, and this is why we must be against all gun bans. Since assault rifles were banned in Chicago in 2019, gun violence has only increased. The FBI recently released statistics on shootings in the United States for 2020. The data shows that out of all of the shootings that took place that year, only a small minority were carried out with assault rifles. In fact, of the total number of shootings, only 3% were carried out with an assault rifle. This statistic is surprising when we consider the amount of media coverage and attention that mass shootings receive. When we think of mass shootings, the first image that comes to our mind is often that of an AR-15 rifle. However, the data shows that these types of guns are actually not responsible for the majority of shootings in the United States. So why all the calls for bans against assault rifles? The term propaganda always has these two lives. On the one hand, it is seen as a decidedly negative term that involves manipulation, brainwashing, fake news, and so on. On the other hand, it's a neutral term. It's about shaping, strategizing, communicating a political message with a view to persuading people, a particular kind of audience, to act in a particular way, and then looking at how they are responding to this in order to take the feedback and recalibrate that system of communication. So why all the calls for bans against assault rifles? You tell me. Leave me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Bye.